If you are a real estate agent and you are tired of cold calling, door knocking, paying for ads that flat out don't work, or just tired of not knowing how to generate leads, then this is the channel for you. We are four rockstar agents who have come together to help fellow agents achieve financial freedom as well as location and time freedom. My name is Andy Hollis along with my partners Aileen Fountain, David Doran, and Tim Hollanden. Together we have over 50 plus years experience and knowledge in the real estate and sales and training industry and we are hoping to pass that knowledge on to you. So let's get started. Aaron and I have been friends now for a long time. Um, we met at a conference way back when. I got started in real estate 21 years ago and we met at a conference there and uh, Craig Proctor and we both joined his coaching program and Aaron ended up going on becoming a coach with Craig Proctor um, but grew his business really big. Grew his business up to uh, what, top 50, right? In, in Keller Williams in the world, right Aaron? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and started his own brokerage back in 2009, Ken Real Estate Group down there in Dallas. And um, five years ago, made the move over here to EXP with his brokerage. But uh, anyway, has done some phenomenal stuff and just on top of things. I mean, when we were talking a couple weeks ago and he showed me some of what he was doing. So um, I'm like, we got to turn this into a, a series. There's just a lot here that he's doing that, that I hadn't seen before. Just keep it on top of things technology wise and whatever. So, Aaron, I'm going to turn it over to you. Why don't you, you know, anything else you want to say about yourself, introduce yourself to everybody. And uh, we'll let you share your screen and get into it. So appreciate you doing this. Okay. Yeah, no problem at all. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, not a not a big pat myself on the back kind of person. I've been doing real estate now for 21 years. I've uh, sold over 3,000 homes. I've always worked both sides of the transaction, both listing and buyer side. And I think that helps keep me fresh on the listing side. So I still work with buyers. I uh, still work with sellers. Um, I'm about a 60-40 split. 60% of my business has been from listings, 40% from buyers over the, the course of the 21 plus years I've been in business. So um, one of the things that helped me when I first got into real estate was I was kind of a young guy, 25 years old, and computers were kind of new into the systems. Uh, we were, MLS was in DOS, which is crazy to think that we actually did DOS, but uh, you couldn't even email out of it. Uh, but I had grown up with computers, had a buddy of mine write a program, you know, buyers right away. So I've always been on top of the newest and latest trends in real estate. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with being in coaching programs or groups like this where you can learn things. Um, one of the things we've been implementing here recently is uh, doing a pre-listing package or uh, pre-listing uh, marketing, mostly all digital now. We used to send a big box to their house and, you know, they, we called it, I think what it was called the bomb or something like that. But now we've got it and we've turned it basically all digital um, and it works even better now. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and go through it. This is basically the 14 steps I call the way at every listing. This is what we train our team on. Um, so I'm going to train you just like I would train my team and how we, how we utilize this, maybe go into a little bit more detail because you guys can take this. I'm going to give you everything. Uh, if you click a few of the links that we'll leave in the chat, um, you'll have access to everything that I utilize that you can, uh, you know, rip off and duplicate R and D. So, um, let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to share my screen here. The biggest thing's going to happen right away, which is, uh, step number two in this whole process it is all of the pre-listing stuff. So that's going to be the, the, the goal right away, pretty much. So. Let's say you booked an appointment, booked a listing, you go into step one, you book the appointment, you give them choices on um, what they can do, you know, as far as when you're going to meet them, days, afternoons. I always ask for days or afternoons because I don't like to work evenings. I like to spend time with my family. Um, so I don't like to work after five or six o'clock. So I always ask, you know, which one works better for you, days or afternoons, you know, weekdays, weekends. I will still work some weekends, but I control that time. You know, if they ask for a time that I have scheduled for my family, that goes into my calendar as well. I have an appointment book, so I can't meet at that time. Would one or three o'clock work better for you? I always give them two choices, simply from the fact that if you give them choices, they typically select one of them. You're leading them into times and dates that work the best for you. And it sounds like you're more busy if you have control. <laughs> you know, you could have... 
you know, 23 hours of free time, but if you give them only a couple hours to pick from, it sounds like you'd have a fuller and busier schedule. So after we book the appointment, I'm going to ask uh, for their uh, cell phone numbers for both of them, as well as their email addresses for both of them. Uh, if there's two people involved, the reason I do this is it's going to help me to market to them um, after the fact, right? So before I come in the door. So I'm going to tell them I'm going to send them an email and a text, uh, you know, within a few hours of us hanging up uh, that I definitely want them to review it because it's going to, there's going to be a short video for me on next steps and how to prepare for our appointment together, which is extremely important because I want them to view this information prior to being walking in the door. So that's basically step one, pretty easy. Um, step two is where all the action happens. Basically step two is we're going to create the pre-listing video. Okay, now I know a lot of you are scared of video. Don't be scared of video. I was scared of video for 10 years. I've been telling, you know, I've been told Got to do video, got to do video, right, Jeff? And what do we do? We didn't do video, right? So mm -hmm. you, you got scared of it because, oh, I don't like the way I sound or, you know, I don't like the way I look. Heck, half the time I'm in a T-shirt and a ball cap and I still do the videos and send them to clients like that. It comes off more authentic than when I'm in a three-piece suit, which I never wear. But, uh, you know, so I think some of the people doing video, they're doing video too professionally polished you want to come off authentic. So it's me in front of my cell phone. Um, because the video is going to be longer than a minute, I want to hold the phone this way. All right, so I'm going to go uh, horizontal and I'm going to create a pre-listing video. I'm going to show you what that is. So let's uh, go, let me see. Whoops, I advanced the slide. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple minute video. I'll I'll play it here, um, show you that I'm not afraid of video. I'm actually going to let you listen to me while I listen to me. Um, and so I shoot the video. I upload it to YouTube. The reason I upload it to YouTube is now I can control some of the stuff YouTube lets me do, lets me do and how I deliver it. Um, you can do it to Vimeo or Loom or any of those services as well. I just like YouTube because I want to get my channel to grow. And so if I can send more people to that channel, they can then consume more information about me, right? Um, it's kind of like the Zillow. What Zillow did was very, very smart is they have you come to a site to view one property, but what do they do? They serve you multiple properties over and over and over and over again and get you in a rabbit hole in their system. I want people in a rabbit hole in my YouTube. Um, so I, I Aaron, agree. We're, Aaron, we're still seeing the, there you go. Cool. Yep. You brought so it forward. I, the video, I upload it to YouTube. It looks like this. I take a picture with my phone and using Canva, I just put a little mark over it for Matthew and Danette, you know, Tugman. So that's the client. So the video says just private video for Matthew and Danette Tugman, a little bit of information of when the meeting is, and that's it. It's a unlisted video, and I utilize this link right here. Okay, the, and I'm not going to send them the video link. I'm going to show you what I can create that's even better than that. So here's the actual video that they would see. So look at Hi, Matthew and Danette, this is Aaron Ken. I just want to say, first of all, thank you for inviting me over to your home to do a home evaluation for you and show you what we do to market your property that sets us apart and that has allowed us to help over 3,000 clients here in the DFW area buy and sell homes over the last 21 plus years. I know you'll find that it's an innovative marketing approach and I wanted to share with some of that with you right away. So uh, down below this video, you'll see if you click that link, it'll go to our Google page. You can kind of get an idea of what we post on there. Also, you can see all the reviews that we have. We have over a hundred plus there on Facebook and also on Zillow if you want to look in more than one place. They're all different and unique uh, reviews that we've had over the years. And I also, below this video, so if you open this and you just scroll along the bottom of this video, it'll say play in YouTube. So if you click that button and play it in YouTube, uh, in the comments, I put a link to a document that has four documents inside of it. So it's going to have uh, one, how we price properties to sell for top dollar. Two, how do we market properties 
and what do we do that may be different and just gives us a little background information on us in general. The third uh, thing there is what we call our 88 laws of turbulence, which is basically anything that can happen in a real estate transaction that we know up front that we budget for and that we have systems to make sure that we do not have turbulence and we have smooth sailing throughout the process. And then the last documents are 147 step system of what we do from start to finish when we're marketing a property. So those do open up in a Google Drive document. If you do have problems with those, just let me know and I can email them to you. They're just rather large files, so it's easier to deliver them this way. Thanks again for listening to this short video, and I look forward to seeing you Friday at one o'clock uh, for our appointment. And I can't wait to see your house. It sounds like a beautiful place. So basically that's that's the video. And then of course the end screen comes up, it's like 20 seconds long, and it shows them a couple of videos that they can click on. They live in Keller, so I have a Keller market report. Wow, it's amazing that that shows up, right? So that's all pre-planned, so they know that I know their market very, very well, right? Uh, here's another video I've done before selling uh, selling a house, you know, five upgrades to sell before selling, right? So I can get them in the rabbit hole on my uh, YouTube channel, but I'm pre-selling me. Now, how do we deliver this? Um, we're utilizing uh, KV Core because it comes with being a, an EXP agent. You get KV Core for free. So we're utilizing KV Core. Before I was KV Core, I used to use a service called Quick Funnels. Um, but instead of having to pay 150 bucks a month for Quick Funnels, this is free. So, and it's super easy to build a page. So I'm going to go over here for those that are um, KV Core users or whatever you have, Commissions Inc., Boomtown, I'm sure there's all similar ones that do this if you have an IDX kind of service. If not, go out and buy something that you can do this because it's well worth uh, the money investment. Um, in the PowerPoint, I said that over 50% of the um, people that we meet with, we never have to do our listing presentation because they're pre-sold before we walk in the door and it's all because of that video and what we provide through this KB4 site. So one of the things you can do is go to lead engine here and build a landing page, or you can go to landing page here and click start building. So if I do build a landing page, it's gonna open up this blank landing page. Pretty simple. So what I do is I'm gonna go to an older one uh, that I've already created and copy and paste everything. <laughs> it's pretty simple. But as far as the landing page goes, I don't want to do lead generation because it's not a lead generation ad. This is to just one person. I'm sending this just to them. So I want to do a video view. So it gives me a video here in the uh, form. On the submit button text, that's this button right here. This is where I'm going to say, uh, see my 120 plus five-star Google reviews. And it builds the button right away. You can see it now it's, it's there. The URL is basically the URL for that site or my Google, my business page site that we have registered at reviewthekinteam.com. So if they click that button, it's going to open review. It's live right away. This is the YouTube ID right up here. So this is why I said um, this is important right here. I'm going to just take the last part of this and copy it. Go back into the form and paste the YouTube ID. And now you can see that video is up and live. And I, real quick, you don't put the whole link in there, correct? No, it's just the last part, the very last part after all the YouTube.b. After the slash, that's all I'm putting in there. Gotcha. And then it pops in the video. You'll know if it works or not, because you'll either see the video or you won't, right? This is why it's important to shoot the video and get it uploaded first. And then I could keep this girl looking. Uh, doesn't they do anything for me. So I usually change it to something uh, regarding a house, something like this, right? And it's quick and easy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change all this text. But instead of retyping this, I'll show you, you know, kind of what it looks like. So I basically have this for every 
client that I'm meeting with, this is what we do as a, this is our pre-listing package. So it's going to be directed to them. We're going to talk about their house, right? So this is the address. And the reason I put the address in the second line is because it shows up in their link up here in the um, bar, right? So it makes it kind of custom that way. It just automatically does that. Then we're going to talk about some of the stuff that we do uh, with their home. Professional photography, 3D tours. Uh, this should be drone video, not drove, but you know, uh, everybody makes mistakes. Uh, <laughs> state best photography. And then why we do this, staging consult. That's something we do with all of our uh, properties as well. So we, we tell them about a staging consult and a little bit of you know, pat yourself on the back, why you should be using me kind of information, right? And then that's the website. So this is exactly what I'm gonna be sending them through text. But what we do is a little bit different is we want to, um, we want to send this custom so that they open it, right? So what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to GoDaddy and I'm gonna search a domain name, right? So let's say I'm doing this for, Steve and Jamie, I hope this is available, but not even check. So let's say I'm sending this to Steve and Jamie. So I would create a website called Steve and Jamie dot something. And that's what I would send to them. So it's very personal. Um, now I always, because I'm cheap, I go with the cheapest option that's possibly there. And right now at GoDaddy, it's Steve and Jamie dot online. So you don't have to get a dot com you know, dot org or anything like that. This is 99 cents. So it costs me about 30 minutes of my time to build the video, upload the video, um, build that website, and then 99 cents of my money to um, register the domain name. So in this case, this video was for Matthew and Danette, I believe. So if I go to Matthew and Danette dot online, there's their website, right? So this is what I'm gonna text them. Hey, I've created a custom uh, site for you that's gonna give you some personalized information just for you and your home. This is all on the text. Uh, please go to matthewanddanette.online. And it's linked, so they don't even have to type it, they just click it, right? So what's gonna open is this, they're gonna click the YouTube video, they're gonna watch it like we just did. I instruct them to go to the comments, right? In the comments, they can open up this uh, form here, and there's four documents that I talk about. Okay, here's four documents. This is Bitly. It's safe. It opens up into a PDF. What I want to make sure they do is they open these PDFs and review them because this is going to pre-sell me. Obviously, the video has already done that. The single-page website's already done that. But these guides really help do that. So pricing your home for maximum value, you know, so this is all information about us. What do we do? How do we price homes? How do we set market? Um, what's the relationship between cost and value? These are all things that I've had printed before and I used to bring with me and use them as lead behinds or send them in that bomb package. But this works so much better because they're able to view this and I actually know when they view it. The, the maximum payoff guide looks like this. Again, all information about me, why to use us, uh, what we do, you know, how many homes we sell, average list of sales price versus the market, so on and so forth. And now that these are digital, I can actually change these and keep these updated. When I used to do them in booklets, you know, we'd print off, you know, 500 of them at a time to get a cost savings discount. Um, but once you print them, you can't update them for a while, you know, until you run through 500 of them. This I can run through all the time. This talks about where we post our homes, how we do media marketing, so on and so forth, right? We do professional photography, staging, 3D home tours. Here's our 147 set system. You can see this is old because I look like I'm 25 here. I might have been 30, but I'm a little older than that. But anyways, uh, you know, like every real estate agent, they post their pictures from 20. <laughs> um, here's all the uh, stuff that we do step by step. 88 laws of turbulence. I mentioned this in the video. You know, this is basically 
all the things that we have to come in contact with throughout a transaction to make sure the transaction goes through um, smooth. This is basically our, this is why you shouldn't do it for sale by owner document. Because when they look at this and they're like, holy crap, there's 88 things in here that could happen in my transaction. I don't want that to happen, right? So those are all the documents, they get them. I'm gonna send, uh, actually, if you go to matthewanddanette.online, I don't know if we need to put that in chat, Jeff, but if you do, go to matthewanddanette.online, what it's in the comments. If you click it, you have access to it. So I will never take that video down. It'll be there for you to access and look at. So after we do all this, we're pretty much pre-sold. This they've done, they've watched the video, they've looked at all the documents, so on and so forth. We're pretty much sold before I even walk in the front door. I rarely, I'd say 50% of the time I have to do a presentation. And typically my presentations to um, reconfirm that I'm worth the commission that I'm charging more than it is to sell me because I'm pretty much already sold when I walk in. Um, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. Any questions on all that first? And then I'll... There's a lot of info there, guys. Uh, what what questions do you have off of this so far? This is the this is a big step right here. You might not have KV Core, but there's, you know, chances are you have a site that does something like this. Most of the sites, you know, Boomtown, Commission Zinc, all the different, you know, different. CRMs and stuff, you know, so many of them do stuff like this. But, um, and there's ways out there to create a landing page. <clears throat> what, do, what do you guys see with this? I mean, do you see value in what this could do as far as, you know, getting this out to a a potential client or an appointment for a Friday. Paul, go ahead. You have your hand raised. Yeah. Um, so I uh, I was on the first one too, uh, Aaron, sure. and it saw the value in coming back. Um, but with respect to uh, you know, say at an agent that doesn't have three thousand home sales, say that they're say that um, we want to yours are all branded and and heavily branded. Um, it, do we have any kind of a template that is not branded that would just have the the text or just the bullet points that we can actually use to build on? Or do you suggest we go into your actual presentation and copy and paste it into a new presentation? I, you know, I'm just curious. I suggest yeah, you just go in, uh, go in and uh, recreate it because I unfortunately this was created with publisher about six or eight years ago and I don't even have a PC anymore. <laughs> so I don't even have the publisher files anymore. Wow. So, and so if I need edits done, I send them to my VA and she does her wizard wizardry with Adobe, whatever. I don't even know. Right. Okay. So I don't have them in an editable, editable format. I do know that you can go, there's some services out there like small PDF I've utilized before where I've put in PDF documents and it can and it can translate them into uh, Word documents. I just don't know how all the graphics and stuff will work in that, but mm -hmm. you should get most of the text and things. Okay, and then one last thing too. Um, a big thing that happens out here is people are talking about um, not just uh, staging consults, but actually curb appeal consult. And so, you know, as far as, you know, going that I always have a punch list that whenever I do a listing presentation, I walk through that whole house. And then at the end of it, I offer them a punch list that says, look, you know, here's some suggestions, you know, I mean, is that something you do up front or would you let them know that, hey, you know, st uh, be prepared because we're going to actually walk through the house and we're going to we're going to do like a mini pre inspection just to, you know, to get you, you know, your head wrapped around that there are going to be some things that we need to take care of up front. Yeah, that's more part of the presentation um, okay. part of it, but um, our stager also does exterior consulting too. So um, they get both inside and outside um, when our stager goes through and meets with them. Um, I'm obviously going to walk the home with them and that's further on in the presentation. But um, and to answer your other question is not everybody has 3000 home sales. Obviously that, you know, um, I understand that. If you don't have that, um, use your brokerage's stats. Right, that's what I was thinking, okay. Use your team if you're on a team, or you know, if you're a buyer's agent, use your your whole corporation stats, things like that. And you don't have to have 3,000. To a, to a seller, if you have 50 or 100, 
that's better than somebody that tells them nothing. Mm -hmm. so people do not pre sell themselves before coming in the door. So giving them something is better than nothing or just don't include that part. Just include all stuff that you do in the property. Um, I think I'm still sharing my screen, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. So in this custom landing page, it's super simple. You just go in here, change it to whatever you do, you know, 3D tour, you know, or what have you. Anytime someone joins. Right? Okay. You know, so on and so forth. The only thing with KV4 I don't like is if you triple click it, it erases everything and you can't bring it back. Yeah. Right. So okay. always be cognizant, one click and then delete. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Thanks, Aaron. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions in chat. Brian, you got a question? You got your hand up? You want to yeah, just a quick one. Uh, first, huge value. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, just a question on the information posting, like, do you have to do anything special since you're posting their name and address and stuff on a website? Like, I mean, I know technically it's publicly available information, but, uh, is there anything like that, that we have to do ahead of time, depending on what we would be I don't putting on the page? I've never had an issue with it. Uh, obviously if I don't get the listing, I'm going to delete it, you know, delete that page. Uh, the reason I don't utilize the address like one, two, three main street is because I'm probably going to register that domain in my market and utilize that for, you know, where I post my single page site or tours or things like that. So I always want to be super custom so that they open it. If I just said, here's a random web page, bit.ly dot slash 65 numbers, the likelihood of them opening it is, is much smaller. So I could see that with their names in there. It's like, oh, wow. You know, and they click on it. Yeah. Uh, but the YouTube is private, right? So, I mean, so nobody else can actually nobody can see it. Unless, they know. unless yeah. somebody just randomly types in Matthew and Danette or Steve and Janie. Dot dot online. Online. Yeah, exactly. How <laughs> random is that? Right. Yeah. yeah. So Aaron, um, do you make a website for every single client? Yeah, uh, every single listing appointment we do. Oh, okay. So I have one this Saturday. I'll create a listing appointment for Steve and Jamie. I just haven't done it yet. I didn't do it prior to getting into this call. So that would be my appointment that I'm going on. They will get this whole custom uh, package. Yeah. And see, Cindy, once you do this, like, you know, like he's got, you know, once you do it one time, the first time is going to take you, you know, 30, 40, an hour, 40 minutes, an hour, whatever, to get that first one kind of figured out how you want to do it. Once you do it then, now you've just got it, right, Aaron? So now it's the next time you just go in and it's almost like a template. You know, you just copy and paste and then just putting the new yeah. video in with yeah, the new yeah. address, their names, that kind of stuff. It probably takes you all of 10 or 15 minutes. Am I, am I right? Sure, again, I'll, I'll just show you this. Like, here's the one I already created. So if I go in and copy this, you know, right click, copy, Go in, highlight, paste, there it is. It just puts yeah. it right there. Yeah. So it literally takes me, the longest thing is just typing all this stuff in up here at the top or shooting the video and then uploading it. And I'll make mistakes in the video and be like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, like, or whatever I meant to say or what have you. Again, authentic, authenticity is better than polish. So I don't have these, you know, professionally edited, green screened or anything like that. Now I do have videos on my channel, channel that are like that, but anything face to face, one-on-one, um, -on -one, it should be authentic, not polished. Yeah. There's something about that guys. I mean, I think sometimes we do, we, we hold off on doing video because, and we, because it takes us two hours for one video. You know, whatever, and, and depending on what it is, I mean, you want things to look good and be professional, but I will tell you, like, I send video messages all the time. And this, I shared this a couple weeks ago, like, I, I was sending a message to a, to a client, and I was sitting right here in my home, right where I'm at right now, and the door to my office, which is right here, was open. You know, Amazon comes to the door, you know, two dogs go crazy. I was going to stop the video, but and I just kept it going. I just laughed at, well, the joys of work from home, shut my door, and dogs are going crazy, whatever. I sent the video. I got a reply back. That was hilarious. Whatever, blah blah blah. You know, it's there's a connection that's made there with something like that. Like, just be authentic, be real. You know, with the, some of this kind of stuff. Yeah, even even so. with leads, you know, if uh, leads yeah. come in, 
video is far superior than text and far superior than a phone call. Nobody answers the phone anymore if they don't know the number, right? But if I'm texting them, they're probably going to look at it. And if they see my face and, you know, like, I'm like, hey, you know, like that, we have one that automatically goes up that seems custom, but it's not because it's me in the grocery store. And it's literally, hey, I just got your information online, but I'm in the grocery store, so it's easier to shoot this text and give you the announcements in the background and things like that. That open rate's like 78%, which is crazy. But you can actually set that up uh, in KV Core. Um, when you have it, when a lead imports from say like realtor.com, that that's the very first thing that goes out. Cause usually I have a welcome to Snoqualmie Valley le- email, but I think it'd be better if I just created a video and then bang, yeah, do something like that, you know, be by the river. Sorry, I'm walking my dog by the river, you know? Yeah, I'll give it. Okay, cool. It's personal. And again, it's, it doesn't look scripted. It doesn't look like you just spent all this time and money, you know, doing the perfect video because people click off of those. This looks like it's personal with that. Um, want to go ahead and continue through? Yeah. Any other questions, guys, off of this, what he just did with this, again, this pre-listing website specific to these people, the video. Any questions off of that? Okay, cool. Yeah, go ahead. Pretty quick. So it'd probably take 15, 20 minutes to go through the rest of this. Yeah, go ahead. So I have two here was create all the stuff we just did, right? Um, 2A is run targeted ads with Facebook. Now we're going to do this next week on how to do this and how to set it up, right? So what I want to do is I want to be everywhere that seller is, okay? So they've already got my message, they've already got my video, all that stuff. Um, But I'm going to run targeted ads with Facebook to the seller. What you have to do in order to create a custom audience, this will just go over the basics of this, you have to have at least 100 people. So I typically do 100 to 200 people, so I know that there's at least going to be 100 Facebook users in there. If in worst case, get 100 of your friends from Facebook into a custom audience, and then I'm gonna add Danette, and I'm gonna add Matthew, and their email address, and their phone number. Remember, I asked for both of their phone numbers and both of their email addresses, so I have all that information. That's not for me to communicate with them on their emails or phone numbers. That's for me to uh, target them in Facebook. Because if they have a Facebook account, most of the people use, like 72% of people use their real information as far as email address and phone number, because that's how they connect with old classmates and friends and family and things like that. So what we can do is upload that into a custom audience in Facebook. It searches for Danette and Matthew once it finds them. We create an ad that's going to be delivered to them prior to my appointment. So that's when I set up my appointment. I try to always set them up 48 to 72 hours in advance. Like the appointment I set up yesterday was for Saturday. Reason for that is it gives me time to build all this. And now I'm going to set up the custom audience and it's going to pound Steve and Janie with ads about me. And it's basically just, just sold videos, 3D tours all the stuff that's awesome that we do in marketing. But every time they get on their social media device, oh, there I am, oh, there I am again. And I'm also there for these 100 or 200 people. I like to use leads that I haven't converted yet, just in case one of them converts off of something I sent out that wasn't even intended for them, right? So they're gonna see this over and over again and Typically, when I walk in the front door, they're like, oh, my gosh, we see you everywhere. What the heck's going on? I'm like, oh, it's, have you ever heard of a reticular activating system, which basically, like, if you're looking to buy a new Ram truck and you're driving around and you want to buy a red one, all you see now is red Ram trucks. That is a scientific fact that that happens, and it's called a reticular activating system. I've probably always been there, and you've probably seen my stuff. You just didn't, you weren't in the position to sell your home so you didn't pay attention to it, which is halfway true and halfway a lie because I know that I'm marketing directly to them and they're getting pounded with my stuff. I'm just passing it off as reticular activating system. And this is how aggressive we are in our marketing, right? So I'm giving them a pre-listing package. They got all the documentation to look at. 
that if nothing else, they start seeing my stuff on Facebook and they're like, oh my gosh, what did he send in the other stuff? And they open that and it causes, one thing causes the other to happen, right? Again, I want to be pre-sold so my listing appointments are fast, 15 to 30 minutes, instead of what I used to do an hour to two hours, because I'd have to go through my whole presentation and set them and everything else. This I'm pre-sold when I walk in the door. But we're going to go through this, I believe, next week, Jeff. Next week, yeah, we'll hit how to do these targeted ads. Because it's just too long to do both of these things. So I'm just going to go on. Uh, step three of the process is be early. I always try to get to the, to the presentation 15 minutes early. I don't go to the door 15 minutes early, but this is for me to drive around the neighborhood. Just simply from doing this a long time and doing a lot of appointments, there's been countless times if I didn't do this, where I show up and they're like, hey, what about the home on 123 Main Street? We saw that it was for sale. I'm like, oh, I didn't even see that when I did my comp report, right? This allows me to drive and at least see properties that are on the market that may or may not be in my report and I can talk more educated about it. Uh, step four, knock on the door. I always knock on the door. I ring the doorbell five minutes before my appointment. The reason I do this, I want to hear the vacuum cleaner running. One, because this is a pattern interrupt for them. They're they're thinking we're going to meet Aaron at three o'clock. Even though I've sent all this stuff, pre-sold myself, whatever, their walls are still going to be up because no matter what you think you are, you are a salesperson and people have their walls up for sales, salespeople. I'll prove it. Walk into Foot Locker. The only reason you're going to go to Foot Locker is to buy shoes. But you walk into Foot Locker and somebody greets you and says, hey, can I help you with anything? You're like, oh, no, just look at it. Bull crap, you're looking to buy shoes. They're there to help you. They're not even making a commission. So this way, it is a pattern interrupt. When I come early, they haven't had time to have that last minute chat like, oh, we're not going to sign anything today or da 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 da. This gets me in front of them and gets me with their wall. Then introduce yourself, nice firm handshake. If you don't know how to have a firm handshake, practice with somebody, it is important. Um, step five, I go right to their table and I pop open my laptop, turn it on, make small, small talk, click on the listing presentation. So my listing presentation comes up on screen. They know we're going to talk about their home at their table, not at a couch, not in their office. I'm picking where I want it and I want it at the table, right? If I let them pick, if I've never done it where I'm like on the couch, you know, and I've got one on this side and one on the other side, and I'm looking back and forth, and the presentation goes horribly wrong, right? So get me at a table with them. Then I'm going to ask them if we can uh, go take a look at the home. We take a look through the property. I make physical notes, yes, on an uh, iPad, or I use a Remarkable, um, which is, you know, basically just – a journal, and I'm going to make notes about their house. A lot of times I don't ever look at these notes again, but it shows that I have supreme interest in what they're telling me and what their house is, right? So again, it's all about that sales pitch for you without really having to say anything. I will make notes on both sell, uh, positive things and negative things. I want to get them talking about their home, about their life, about their family, and point about things on the wall, things like that, because my ultimate goal is to find out which personality type are they, D, I, S, or C, because then that tells me how I'm going to present my presentation, who the dominant one is, who I need to sell to. Easy to do. When, when asking, you know, when I want to take this tour through the house, I want both of them to give me the tour, not just one because I want to see who takes the lead, right? That's who I need to present to. Very important. Next thing is step seven, compliment them on the condition of the home, even if the home's a you know, piece of garbage. I'm going to compliment them on the home and tell them how much I can sell it. I'm not going to bring up negatives at this time. I only bring up anything negative about the home when uh, I've already signed the listing agreement. Uh, sit down at the table near the laptop, ask them what their moving plans are, and establish a time frame for their move. Or I've done this probably within that walk around the house as well, too. Step nine, ask them what they're looking for in a real estate agent uh, that they work with. Um, 
what I'm based, this is called the Xerox close. If you've ever read any closing books or anything like that, basically you ask them what they're looking for. They tell you, and then you sell all that information back to them. Look, I'm the perfect person. I do all the things you're looking for. People rarely say anything outside of what I do, right? Maybe they say, oh, we want open houses every weekend. Okay, I understand that. I'm not gonna do it, but I'm gonna explain why and why the stuff we do in marketing is better than an open house and how we get 10 times the traffic that a normal open house would get. I may do one or two, but I'm not gonna do them every weekend, right? This is especially important if you're going to an expired property because they've already, that person already failed, right? So I'm gonna say, what didn't you like about your past agent? Where do you think they dropped the ball and weren't successful, right? And they're gonna tell you, and they're gonna vehemently tell you. This is awesome, because then you just sell back the good stuff back to them, right? Xerox close. Uh, step 10, I'm gonna segment into the presentation by just basically going into my presentation. We're gonna do this on week three, how I do my presentation open it up and I'm going to do the whole thing in front of you and you'll know have a copy. All right. Uh, 10A, when you reach the end of the presentation, ask them if they have any questions about the marketing program. My presentation is all about marketing and a little bit about us and why it's successful and why it works. If the answer is no, they don't have any questions on the marketing, I ask them a simple question. So assuming we can come to terms on price and fee, do you believe I'm the right agent for the job? and then I don't say another word. It's important that you do not say another word when you ask a question. You make them respond, whether it takes them 10 seconds, 30 seconds, two minutes. I think the longest I've ever had somebody not saying anything is like a minute and a half and it felt like an hour and a half. Cause you're just sitting there looking at them. Cause the person that speaks first loses after a sales question like this, right? So if they're like, yeah, I think everything looks good. Okay, then we can talk about price and fee. Say that question one more time, Aaron, so people hear it, because that's so key. Yeah, so assuming that we can come to terms on price and fee, do you believe I'm the best agent for the job? That's it. There you go. Uh, number 11, uh, step 11, pull out your CMA summary. So you can see, I don't even get into the CMA unless they say I'm the best agent for the job. They say, oh, no, we got to think, well, we don't know. We have to interview other agents. Awesome. Well, I'll come back after you interview those agents and we'll come back and do price. Well, why can't you give us the price now? Well, if you're buying solely on price, you're buying on the wrong thing. Your home's worth a million dollars, Mr. $250,000 homeowner. There, did I win? I gave you the highest price. See how arbitrary that is? You do not want to make your decision on who you use based on price. You want to use the person that's going to get you the highest price for your home through aggressive marketing techniques. Think about that, guys. How many times have you heard that you've been on a listing appointment? Well, you know, and you you answer that question before they've signed anything. Well, this agent said I get three hundred. You're only telling me two eighty. You know, like what? And, and so that's that's where they start going with that. And so now you you start going backwards in in terms of you know their eyes because that agent did this. You you know talk about that for a second here because I mean again it's so key. So if I give them a price, they've already met with one or two people and they gave them a higher price. Now it's a battle. Now I have to battle and say why I think it's 280 and they're saying 300. We address part of it in our presentation up front. Like we, you know, we ease them into that process on why I don't buy listings, what I call it. You know, I'm never going to buy your listing, meaning I'm never going to give you a a super high price just so I can throw a signing yard and beat you up for six months to reduce your price to where it should have been to start with just to get your business. I don't need your business that bad. Aaron, can I ask a question? Sure. Okay. So um, I've, I've had that happen many times. And, and the, the number one thing that I normally say to them is that, you know, there is a practice here in this business of people that will uh, attempt to buy a listing by simply giving you the uh, arbitrary price or a price that will make you feel comfortable. Let's do this one week before we list, let's run another set of comps and come up with a price at that point. How does that sound? I mean, it, that's what I use. Is, does that sound good to you or not? Yes and no, because they could call the other agent and sign it before you come up with that price, right? Or there could be somebody coming in after me and they sign up 
my whole goal is to get them to commit to me and to me only. So then when we get to price, then obviously it's just a price or it's a commission discussion. It's one of those two things that I have to overcome. That's it. It's not all the marketing because they've already said I'm the best marketing agent for the job, right? So um, I would always recommend you go this route. I did it the other routes before and they just, they just don't work as well. If I don't get a commitment, I don't give them price. I'll walk out the door. Okay, sounds good. You know, um, and they never want me to walk out the door because they've got all the pre-listing stuff. Now they've got this. I mean, I've shown them over and over how much value we bring. Okay. Um, we got like 12 minutes. Let me fly through this so we can get to questions. Okay, you're good. Um, so explain the following. We have active listings. These are, you know, you can read, you'll get this PowerPoint. Basically, we talk to them about active pending and closed. We don't bring expires. We don't bring, you know, canceled listings, anything like that. I want to stay within about six to 10 homes total. That's it. That's all I want on market analysis. I do use a system called Cloud CMA. Our MLS is partners with them, um, produces like a 60 page, you know, market analysis. We have a lot of custom pages built within that CMA too. That again, resell us. That's my only leave behind is a CMA and it's got some marketing materials in it. Um, step 12, uh, basically ask questions. Now after looking over the recent home sales, can you see a range of homes similar to yours between X and Y? We always want to talk about ranges. I never give them a price. So I said, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. Maybe you had an agent in here that had a crystal ball, but I'd love to see it because there's no one that can tell you exactly what your home's going to sell for. I can tell you if we price between X and Y that you have a very good likelihood of chance of selling in there or maybe even higher, right? I think your home may be worth 350 to 360. If we price it at 340, we're probably going to get offers, you know, but it's up to you where you want to put it within that range. I feel comfortable about it. We have guarantees based on that range. If their home doesn't sell in that range, we'll start uh, reducing money off of our commission. So a lot of it goes in to why we establish a range instead of one singular price. We want them to pick that price. Um, and then uh, the step 13 is we do a net sheet, go through their exact numbers. We utilize this, um, I think it's called Agent One or something like that. Most title companies have a relationship with this company or something similar where you can plug in their numbers. It gives them all their closing costs, tells them exactly what they're gonna net at closing. It's pretty awesome. Reason we do this is most agents don't. They're afraid of it because when they look at it and they go, oh my gosh, I'm paying 15 grand in commission, you know, or whatever, I'm paying 30 grand in commission, 15 to you, 15 to the other agent. They don't know how to handle that. I just tell them right up front, I understand that commission is expensive. It's the most expensive thing in your net sheet. But I also understand that we're gonna work more for this 15 grand that we're gonna earn than the other agents that you talk to. Right? I've already kind of shown them all that. At this point, they've pretty much committed to me. And then step 14, after receiving the agreed price of the home for the listing, you know, basically we want to get them to sign up. And, and we ask them a question, are you ready to turn list with me today or tonight? If I don't get it on paper at that point, I'm going to go back, I'm going to extend the Facebook marketing campaign, and I'm going to keep bombarding them until they list with somebody else who list with me. I am not a high pressure, you got to sign this right away person um, because that just doesn't work for me. I've found that I've had less success when I go the high pressure route than if I'm like, hey, I understand this is a big decision. It's your biggest financial asset. Obviously, we've shown you everything that we do here. Um, you know, if you need a day or two to think about it, when would be a good time for me to contact you back? So they tell me, oh, call me on Monday, so I'll call them on Saturday, you know. Hey, I'm just excited about your house that we, we visited. I just want to check back in with you. Here's a couple homes that have recently come on the market since you since we've done our report. Because no other agent's going to do that. No other agent's going to keep them updated with what's happening in their market if they didn't sign the listing agreement with them, right? So a lot of times that gets me back in the door and we get the listing check. So. That's it. That's all 14 steps. Next week, we're going to go over marketing as far as creating this Facebook 
retargeting audience, how we retarget them for the pre-listing. Um, and then I know a couple other ways that you can utilize it. And then uh, a few ways that we market to one, get listings, and then how we market our listings to get buyers.